everyone. I am here with uh, Mike Calloway, and Mike is the Liberal nomination for Cape Breton Canso. And thank you for being here today, Mike. Becky, it's a real pleasure to be here at Tell Ill. I'm very uh, excited to be here. Well, we're excited to have you. Thank you. So you are currently seeking the Liberal nomination for Cape Breton Canso in the next, in the upcoming election. Yes, that's correct. So why don't you start by telling us a little bit about you? Great. Um, well, I am uh, originally from Glace Bay. I uh, live in Sydney River, and I work between uh, Sydney, uh, Sydney uh, Marconi campus and the Strait Area campus. So my family, family lineage, um, my father was a mine rescue worker uh, in a variety of mines in uh, Glace Bay and surrounding areas. My mother comes from a very rich uh, history of uh, fishing and fishing family, the Fords of Glace Bay. Um, and my family really uh, was the impetus for why I'm here today. They've, like most families, instilled a sense of value, a sense of community, a sense of giving back to people. So throughout my career, whether it's been in education for the past 25 years, uh, running my own business, and being an, adv uh, an advocate, a community advocate for healthcare, economic development, uh, First Nations issues, social development, social justice, entrepreneurship, I really can, can all be traced back to, like many of us uh, in our community, and I on the dam would be no uh, different, it's your parents. So they instilled me a sense of giving back, giving back to the community that made you. Uh, when I look at this riding, um, it's a huge riding. Uh, I've been to Pomquet, I've been to Canso, I've been to Isle Madame, I've been to Port Hood, about 30 communities since May. And when I'm going to these communities, and I, I often hear my, my father who passed away in 2012 saying, listen and get to know the communities. Listen, listen, listen. And I've been listening to so many people. I've had crowds of 180 people. I've had crowds of five people. And the connections that I've made has been a result of listening and going back to those values of work ethic, commitment, breaking down barriers, fighting for the little person, uh, being passionate about what you do, uh, and having the experience to tie that together. And my parents taught me that there are times when you have to lead and there are times that you have to be on the side and encourage others to lead, but to always give back. So I've been doing that through uh, recruiting doctors as a volunteer for Cape Breton. Uh, I was instrumental in playing a, a role with many others to bring the new cancer center to Cape Breton. I've been instrumental in uh, soon there'll be an announcement about a collaborative health clinic with new doctors for Cape Breton. I've been focused on economic development through my time at the Nova Scotia Community College working in uh, uh, the Strait Area Campus, which covers Richmond County and Inverness County, Victoria County, Guysborough County, and Antigonesh County. Um, and my time at CBU was very much focused on First Nations issues, uh, First Nations education. I've run my own business. That gives me a sense of that, you know, what it's like to be a small and medium-sized enterprise uh, owner. Um, and I've volunteered my time in causes that are important to me. Uh, one of them is around minority rights. Uh, and I was lucky last year to be selected to be on the Electoral Boundaries Commission. It was an immense learning experience, Becky, for me. Um, I sat on with nine additional uh, Electoral Boundaries Commissioners. And one of the major focuses early on was reestablishing uh, the riding provincially of Richmond as a protective Acadian riding, along with Argyle and Clare and, and Preston, uh, an African Nova Scotian community in um, Halifax. And my mother, my grandmother is also Acadian. She was from Shetty Camp. So I learned through the tutelage of Paul Gadette and uh, Leonard Lefort uh, of the importance of reestablishing this provincial riding back to the protective riding of Richmond. And what I learned from them was the immense pride, passion that this community has, the cultural distinctiveness, the linguistic uh, distinctiveness, but just in general, the community's distinctiveness. And we fought very hard to make that as a recommendation uh, for the provincial government. We made that happen, and we're convinced that come the next election, Richmond will be back to what it was, um, which is fantastic. I played a major role in that. Consequently, uh, we didn't want to stop there. Uh, we looked at um, the opportunity to be innovative in terms of Shetty camping its own riding. And we worked exceptionally hard on that. Uh, myself, Paul Gadette, uh, Leonard LaForte, Glenn Graham, and I 
became so passionate and involved in minority rights before this commission, it really, in, during that time, really entrenched the importance of Acadian, Acadian communities to this province, to this country. So we began to work on Shetty Cam. And that became a bit of an interesting process where we, um, it wasn't part of the original plan, but we made it part of the original plan to attempt to make that its own uh, writing. We were unsuccessful. We lost five, five votes to four votes. But what I did uh, was wrote a, a letter of dissent in support of Shetty Camp, uh, the reasons why we thought it was important. I supported the recommendations, but wrote a letter of dissent specifically with respect to Shetty Camp and gave them some recommendations in terms of how best we can look at being innovative in terms of economic development monies for Acadian communities. The passion that I have for minority rights, the passion I have for rural Cape Breton, rural, rural Cape Breton Canso, is absolutely important to me. In my letter, I speak to the importance of rural, rural empowerment, rural opportunity. And for me, if I am uh, so lucky to be the nominee, I'll be focusing on Canso, Arishat, as much as I'm focusing on Glace Bay. Why? Because the assets are there, the talent is there, but we need to be brought together. Our communities, whether they're Glace Bay, whether they're uh, Duncan, whether they're Arishat, Palm Cut, Shetikam, we need um, someone, people, to be brought together and look at what can be done united as opposed to divided. I believe that we can turn a lot of things around. My slogan, my mantra, who I am, throughout all my work, professionally and volunteer, is around, it starts with community. An MP needs to be interconnected, interwoven, collaborative with the communities it serves. I do not want to be a nominee that's there to cut the ribbon. I want to be a nominee that's there to say, what are our top three things that we need to do in Isle Madame? I want to bring people together. I believe we can do it. Um, so these are the passions that I have, the experience that I have, over 25 years of experience working in economic development, working in education, working as a private business person, but also an advocate for communities, plural communities. Um, last year we started, uh, I started along with a lot of people on the east coast of this island, a group called the Ark of the East Coast. And what is that idea? What is the, what is the rationale, rationale behind that group, Becky? It is around taking communities like Glace Bay, um, Arishat, Port Hawkesbury, Lewisburg, and Gabarus, and saying the community groups that are working individually on their own community initiatives, what are some areas that we can collaborate on? So I would like for us to look and think big. I would like to say to, to the people out there, let's look at the Florida Lee Trail. Let's look and have discussions on making that a viable trail that showcases this, this side of the island. Let's look at broadband. Let's, let's make sure that if we're going to wanting to create an economic development cluster on the east side of the island, everybody, business, mom and dad, sister and brother, clergy person, needs to have access to cell phone coverage and the internet. Those are just a couple of examples. How do we diversify and listen to the fishers? Listen to the fishers of this community to talk about how do we, how do we diversify um, their products? How do we create new ones? How do we look at applied research to make them, the fishers, better? So these are the things that I have experience in doing. And these are the things that I want to bring to the table, Becky. Um, we need someone that can go in there and represent all communities. And I guarantee you, my passion lies in, in the rural part of this riding because I see the potential. I see the opportunity. And hey, nothing in life is easy. Anybody that sits in front of this camera or this camera or this camera and says, we can do this tomorrow, I don't know if they're actually telling you the truth. But I can tell you this, from my perspective, I can't promise much in life, but I can tell you this, no one will work as hard for this community that we're in right now than me. And I will be meeting with people. It won't be, where's Mike Kellaway? It'll be, can we get rid of Mike Kellaway? He's been here too much. Uh, that's key, right? It's about connecting with community. It's about listening to community. And it's about working together on solutions for the community. Um, and here's the other thing. This riding can do it. This riding has the talent 
and the ability, whether we're talking about health care, whether we're talking about economic development, whether we're talking about um, economic uh, streams such as the creative arts. We can, we, can, we can do better. We can be better because we have the talent here to do so. It's about uniting people and being focused, collaborative, coordinated, and looking at real tangible results. I have an experience in doing that. And what's great about the work that I've done, it's not about me. I'm not the person that you know, says, hey, that was me. I did this. It's usually, it, nine times out of 10, we did this. We did this. We can continue to do this. And let's do more of this, whether it's economic development, social development, social justice, you name it. And I'm super, super enthusiastic and passionate about it. But I know in my heart of heart, sending me to Ottawa, hopefully, if that works out, and I hope it does, um, that we're going to do some special things together. Isle Madame, Guysborough County, the CBRM, Inverness County. I really, truly believe that. So we, I, I'm pretty sure you will, too. Well, thank <laughs> I you. have to be honest with you. I, I thank think you. I, I, your enthusiasm is overwhelming. Oh, thank <laughs> really you. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. So you're pretty far into the nomination now. Uh, so where are, you, are we now in the nomination process? Well, there's two days left uh, before the nomination vote is held. And so um, this Thursday, uh, August 29th, there'll be an opportunity for people to vote in two locations. Sydney Forks, uh, the Sydney Forks Recreational Center from 4.30 to 6.30. Uh, and then uh, the Port Hawkesbury Civic Center from 7.30 to I think about quarter after 9.00. 9.30, sorry, 9.30. So the nomination itself, uh, the, the speeches, uh, will be at the Civic Center. Uh, so people have a chance to vote because the writing's so big. Right. Uh, so that's kind of where we are. So now um, we're calling people, we're Facebooking people, we're texting people, oh, yeah. any possible way to get to the people yeah. that are on our list, that are on the liberal list, to, to come out and vote. And I can't stress enough. Whoever you vote for, come out and vote because it's absolutely essential. Because I believe that this election, everyone will always say this election's important, it's the most important one. But I think we have distinct differences on how we want this country to go. We can go one way or we can be progressive and go another way. We can look at limiting freedoms or we can look at expanding freedoms. We can look at a progressive uh, government that looks at helping people and giving people a hand up, or we can look at being not as generous as we should be with doing that. Sending someone to Ottawa who knows the writing, who's worked the writing, is essential. So in my time at the community college, my area of responsibility has been consequently this writing. It's been Guysborough County, uh, Antigonesh County, Inverness, Victoria, CBRM, Richmond County, First Nations communities. And I've been working on training programs, working with businesses to create businesses in those areas, uh, working on applied research projects that are designed to help businesses and communities. So who you send to Ottawa is essential. Who, someone that's ready to go, someone who understands the issues, but more importantly, someone who knows they don't have the answers to everything, that they know it starts with community. Everything comes back to community. And you're absolutely right. You're like Hank Snow. You've been everywhere. <laughs> you, you know what? Uh, th the funny story about that, <laughs> Becky, is that I, I'll get um, messages saying, you can't possibly be in five different places today. You're Photoshopping your face, jokingly. <laughs> and for me, running for the nomination, it wasn't about running in just one area because that's where the votes are. I do not want to, I did not want to run a campaign like that. It's absolutely essential that everyone is involved in this because, again, united, we're better, mm -hmm. divided, we're not. So to quote Hank Snow, uh, yes, I've been everywhere, <laughs> and I'm hoping to be uh, everywhere again and again and again. I think when you see my name, hopefully you know that it's about engagement, listening, and getting things done, and I want to be in every community that I humanly possibly can, and we're working on that. And I imagine you're hearing a lot of different issues sure. from all across everywhere. So what are some of the most key issues that you can? Absolutely. Um, 
you know, if I had to look at um, the top tier, mm. um, certainly healthcare mm. is one. Uh, certainly economic development is another. Um, poverty, uh, in particular a child poverty, which I think the uh, Trudeau government is making. You can never rest on your laurels when it comes to poverty, but the Trudeau government has made, I think, substantial gains in trying to narrow that gap. I'm very proud of that. Uh, my, mom, my mom's a senior. Um, she is a person that is um, dealing with cancer. Um, for her, pharmacare. So her issue is my heart, mm -hmm. near to my heart. And I hear this among many seniors in our community. We're hearing, Mike, that there may be talks about a national pharmacare plan or, or at least um, a desire to move in that direction. We need that. We need that. Uh, so, so those are some of the some of the some of the issues. Then, of course, broadband uh, for 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 many communities on the east side and west side of the island, and in Canso and in Guysboro, though that's very important as well. Mm -hmm. um, so those are some some of the, some of the issues. And then there's you know very unique um, uh, individual challenges and issues that that are that are important. Um, but those are the ones that. Um, those are the challenges. Now, the opportunities are really interesting. Uh, I'm hearing uh, from, from not just young people, but people all over the age bracket around environmental uh, sustainability, ecotourism, looking at uh, how do we really incentivize and monetize the creative arts in the area. Where do we take the next um, step in terms of further enhancing Cape Breton, Canso as a destination, a, a world-class tourism destination? So uh, in particular, like what are the next uh, uh, major projects such as the Florida Lee Trail, such as the, uh, the Cabot Trail? Mm -hmm. How do we expand uh, the great uh, offerings that are in the Cape Breton Miners Museum in Glace Bay in terms of places for individuals to stay? I had a really unique conversation with a couple of people who in Glace Bay talked about the need to look at establishing company homes on the site where the Cape Breton Museum is, Cape Breton uh, Miners Museum is, and use it as lodging for people who want to stay in the area. Um, those are some uh, just of, of the opportunities. I'm really enthused by the young people um, in particular that are part of my campaign. Um, they, they want to stay in Cape Breton, they want, they want to st uh, raise a family in Cape Breton, but they're also talking about unique ideas around uh, business ideas. Mm -hmm. And I want to play a role in that. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think there's the role for the MT is to, 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 be a, to be a partner in that. Not necessarily lead it, but to provide um, opportunities and resources and direct people in the right direction and make those connections. Again, un unifying mm -hmm. people together. So as many as, it, it, there's a lot of challenges. You know, yeah, healthcare being one, uh, but there's also opportunities for us to be innovative. So that's where the rubber hits the road for me. Mm -hmm. As an MP, you want an activist MP. Mm -hmm. As an MP, you want someone that has experience in economic development, education, social development, and is interconnected to communities. Um, I am in many, and I want to be in more. Mm -hmm. Well, you're from Glace Bay. And, I am. And you, you live in Sydney River. So... Are you going to be able to get around to see everybody? Do you think you can? Yeah. Yeah, I think Cat you can. Categorically, yes. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, it's it's not have to be. I want to be. Right. I really, um, we have um, a bungalow in Red Islands, which is not too far from here. Uh, in the summertime, we go there. Um, I've gotten to know this this part of Cape Breton quite well uh, because we do spend our summers uh, in, in, in Richmond County. Um, I think it's absolutely important for the riding to succeed, everybody needs to succeed. So this is where, if there is a project that happens in Canso, you know, how do we kind of connect the dots to how it impacts Duncan Morian or Petit de Gras or whatever? Because one community has something doesn't mean a community and the other community doesn't have something. There are always ways, in my opinion, to make connections to success, to development between communities, between regions. And my role will be not to do that alone, but to create a group of people or enhance the groups that are already there to say, let's get in the game of economic development. Let's get in the game of social development. That's going to be key. It's not up to one person. I hope to be a person that is an impetus that brings people together. But it's not up to Mike Kellaway to, to find a solution for everyone. But I can tell you this, 
I'll lead when I need to lead, and I'll support the community when I need to. Well, I believe you will. <laughs> and I really hope you do get together a whole group of like-minded individuals across across the entire area because how wonderful would that be? Absolutely. Oh, and, yeah. and, I mean, I, I think this, this riding has illustrated in the past when it comes together on fundamental issues during times of tragedy or, uh, or, or, or other things, what we can do together. We need to channel that energy. We need leadership. Leadership is about listening. Leadership is about being a guide on the side, but sometimes being that sage on the stage to say, here's where I'm hearing the community wants to go. I'm willing to lead. But in other cases, it could be um, a fisher from Arishat. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be uh, somebody in retail in Port Hawkesbury that wants to lead, to lead this particular initiative. I will get behind 100% and support that individual. Okay, well, what I'm hearing is, you know, that your, 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 your campaign slogan is exactly what you're all about. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, um, it's inherent to who I am. Ah. It's inherent to the people that work uh, with me, and I can't say enough. Um, what's humbling, Becky, about this whole process, and God knows there's immense amount of things that are humbling, it's people that spend five minutes talking to you and saying, okay, I want to support you, and I want to work with you. And you know where that starts? Over a coffee. So imagine if we had coffees all over this region bringing <laughs> people together. The group that I started in Glace Bay called Bay It Forward, it's an economic development volunteer aid, uh, group. When we originally started it, or talked about it, it started with two people, myself and another person over a coffee. And that coffee grew from a coffee with three, five, eight. The Arc of the East Coast, the same type of group, but covering the, the entire east coast of the island around focusing on bringing those communities together, start it with a coffee, start it with conversation, start it talking to like-minded people who said, you know what, yeah, I think we can be better together on certain initiatives. So that's what it means about starting with community. It means that we have the talent and the ability, but we need to talk to each other. We need to listen to each other. We need to look at what are those key areas of strength and opportunity. You know, I look at uh, the IT sector, for example, and I was in an airport uh, because I travel with NSCC. I forget the airport because it all blends into one. But this magazine, I think it was Atlantic Business Weekly, I forget now, but it was something like that. And it said that in Cape Breton, the, one of the fastest growing IT, uh, small and medium-sized IT sectors in Atlantic Canada is Cape Breton. How many people know that? I didn't. How, many, how can we... How can we build on that? You know, how can we build on that? You, uh, you have an industry that's growing. Let's enhance it. Let's enhance it. You know, let's look at craft brewery, for example. How do we work and build on Big Spruce, Breton Brew, Route 19? These are just some ideas that I have as no different than anybody in Isle Madame or across the country. I'm you. Mm -hmm. I've decided that I, in my, my life, at the age of 48, that I just feel incumbent that I would be humbled to serve you and to work with you. I mean, it's servant leadership is about serving, and that's what I want to do. I want to be your person when you look in Ottawa and say, I'm proud that that person is up there advocating, working tirelessly for me, mm. and I can commit to that. Well, what kind of member of parliament do you want to be? I want to be connected to community, so interconnected to community. I want to be energetic. I want to be uh, of, uh, uh, possess vitality, which I have. I want to bring my work ethic uh, in every aspect of what I do. I want to connect opportunity in Ottawa to Cape Breton Cancel and Cape Breton Cancel to Ottawa because I think there's a lot that the rest of the country can learn from the resiliency mm -hmm. of our riding. Mm -hmm. And I want to be that person that advocates 24-7 and not just look at the, the challenges, which is absolutely what I'll be doing, but what are the new opportunities? What are, the new, what, what, what are some of the opportunities around the corner that our riding can capitalize on if we're aware alert and ready for the task. 
So that's the kind of the kind of MP I want. I want to be an MP that's engaged in all of the writing. So one of the things that I'll be doing, if I'm lucky enough to get the nomination and, and win the election, is that we will have a roaming office, and people will come on tell ill and say on such and such a date at such and such a time, we're going to be in Isle Madame, we're going to be in Shetty Camp, we're going to be in Port Hood, and uh, please come. In the, their office hours are this. That, I'm committed to that because you have to bring democracy to the people. Access to your MP is essential, mm -hmm. and um, uh, there will not be a time when somebody will say, "I haven't seen that guy in eight months." It might be, "I have. I just saw that guy eight minutes ago. He's still here." <laughs> um, so, that, those are the kind of things that I will bring as an MP. Mm -hmm. I'll bring experience. I'll be, I'll be bringing um, my my skills, talent. Um, and passion on day one. Mm -hmm. And I'm relishing the opportunity to serve, uh, not because I have an ego, it's because I think together we can do this. Mm -hmm. I think this entire riding is uh, poised for um, um, change and looking at what that change would mean. And for me, there's an opportunity, there's no incumbent. So now you have definitive choices. And I think when you look at me, I hope you do when you look at me, um, that you know I'm accessible, I listen, I care, and I really, really want to serve you and I want to do you proud. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I wish you the best of luck. Thanks, Becky. And again, th that, that nomination is in Port Hawks. Well, for this area, it would be in Port Hawks. That's correct. And at the Civic Center. That's correct. And it starts at what time? Uh, 7.30. Okay, to so, 930. so it's not hard to do. You go to the Civic Center, you walk through the door, and you vote. Is that how that works? So you walk in, you're a registered liberal, you have one piece of ID, you go in, you vote. You'll hear two speeches, uh, myself and, and, and the other candidate. You'll listen. You'll, in some cases, you'll make your judgment on the speeches. In some cases, you may uh, judge from other means. Uh, and you go in and vote and exercise your democratic right to have the right candidate there to uh, advocate for this writing. Oh, I see. Well, I think it's going to be uh, an interesting night. It will. Um, I'm sure that we'll be seeing you in coffee shops everywhere. <laughs> um, I, it, you know what? If there's a coffee shop to be had, I will be there. I'm thinking that you should develop your own brand of coffee. Uh, now you're going to. You're somewhere. My wife is cringing because that's another <laughs> three or four hours out of the day that I won't be home. But uh, but I'll be drinking a lot of coffee, which yeah. I do. But listening yeah. and and wanting to engage yeah. the community. So d how does your wife feel about what you're doing? My wife. Um, my wife has been an amazing. Um, I, I think I could speak for any candidate in terms of their partner or spouse uh, uh, that if you don't have that that partner in this, um, it, it's, it, it would be exceptionally difficult to do. Mm -hmm. So my wife has been exceptionally supportive. Uh, she's been, um, I wouldn't even say the second sober thought. She was, she was the sober thought on a lot of different uh, uh, decisions that we had to make, but she's amazing. Her family is amazing. Uh, the people that I've gotten to know in terms of new friends are amazing. Uh, it gives me energy when I walk into a room with the team that I have. It gives me energy to do better and not to let them down. Um, and the same could be said for new friends that I've met across this riding. Mm -hmm. The bonds that you have with people on certain topics, uh, when you're hugging someone uh, because they are so impressed that they pulled off a major fundraiser like the Harbor Wars recently. Mm -hmm. Um, I was in Lordways. Uh, Harbor Wars was a, um, a fundraiser um, with the Cape Breton Regional Hospital Foundation, which I am a member, but on leave from that. Um, you share special moments with the volunteers who put their effort and their time and their sweat equity into a major fundraiser that was hugely successful. For that moment in time, there's a bond because you share that. So I've shared a lot of tears, I've shared a lot of laughs, uh, sh shared a lot of hopes. And that I take with um, to the day I die. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's real, it's authentic, and that's what I love about this writing. People will tell you what they think, but people are fair, mm -hmm. and people will listen to you. And people want that authenticity. They want a real person running. Mm -hmm. uh, they want someone who's in the trenches, who has been in the trenches, whether it's in volunteering or whether it's in 
education, economic mm -hmm. development, you name it. They want a real person. Mm -hmm. They want to know that that person's going to work their butt off. Mm -hmm. I think too that um, the way with with the health care issue, for example, that is a something that's straight across the board, yeah. and everybody can get behind something, anything that's going to help. I mean, it, any fundraiser. I mean, it doesn't. It's not. Cape Bretoners aren't the only people that do that. You no. know, Atlantic Canadians have always. Well, Canada. People have <laughs> great hearts, and yes. when, it, when it comes to health care, yeah, uh, we've had some interesting yeah. discussions during my travels. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, people listen to my journey on health care mm -hmm. and what I've mm -hmm. w done working with other people. But when it comes to cancer care, is there anybody out there? that has n no connection to cancer and can and and I uh, I certainly do I've I've I, I've told you my my connection to it and when I joined the Cape Breton Regional Hospital Foundation I asked Brad Jacobs I said he's the CEO of the Hospital Foundation I said Brad what's the number one priority do you think for the foundation and he said an expansion of the cancer center the current cancer center in Cape Breton that services our entire region was built with the understanding of 14,000 visits a year. Currently, it's 40,000 visits a year. So Brad and myself and a lot of other committed people worked with the current provincial government to make the case for funding and expansion with the understanding that the foundation would come on for X amount of dollars through fundraising. What we ended up getting was a brand new building, which blew us away. It wasn't an expansion, it was a brand new building. But Initiatives like that, causes like that, and we'll see this with the fundraising efforts that the Cancer Center and the Cape Breton Regional Hospital Foundation will do. People will rally around that because it matters, it cares, and it starts with the community. That's right. Well, I can't wait to see what happens on Thursday. Me too, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sh we'll be seeing you again one way or the other. That's what I figured. Absolutely. If I'm so lucky to win the nomination and if I'm so lucky to, to win the election, well, I would love to come back here. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> you Thank too. you. You're welcome.